Good morning, everybody, and welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Concord. We're so happy you joined us. This morning, Lee's prelude, I think, appropriately set the tone for a week before Palm Sunday, the last Sunday of Lent. Um, today, we're going to be talking about sacrifice um, and giving of ourselves to draw closer to the Lord. Um, we're going to continue meditating in prayer and the holy passion and the crucifixion is drawing closer and we can feel it. We know that Christ's great sacrifice for us on the cross is near and it's a time that we are reminded of any sacrifices we can make in our own lives, things we can give up, things we can change about our hearts so that we can draw, draw closer to what God wants from us and what Jesus wants from us. We're going to continue... with our Lenten Teze, our darkness. This week we have Yuka Yoshi on viola and Wendy Reynolds on cello joining us. And I want you to continue to meditate over the words and let the sound of the strings guide you deeper into the song.
Join with us in the call to worship. God, we bring to you our gifts of praise and gratitude for all your many blessings for us. We offer our lives in service to you as a sacrifice for your love. Help us to carry our cross and let go of the cares of the world so that we can become your faithful disciples. Guide our steps, place joy and song in our hearts as we celebrate your love. Amen. Now bow with me for the opening prayer. You know us well, O Lord. You know that we would like the ways of discipleship to be easy, to have the paths laid out in a neat line with the future clearly visible at all times. But part of our journey is obscured by our own greed and fear. You do not block the way to, to hope and pre peace our own fears provide the barriers, and far too often those barriers take the form of alienation and prejudice. Write your words on our hearts, merciful God. Plant your transforming love in our spirits. Give us courage as we gather this day to bring before you our concerns, our joys, and our sorrows. Give us hearts of peace and confidence in all your sustaining presence. Help us to set your feet on this pathway towards the cross and beyond. Amen. Today we all are called to be disciples of the Lord, to help to set the captives free, make plowshare out of sword, to feed the hungry, clench their thirst, make love and peace our first. To serve the poor and homeless first, our ease and comfort last. God made the world and at its birth ordained our human race to live as stewards of the earth, responding to God's grace. But we are vain and sadly proud, we sow not peace but strife. 
Our discord spreads a deadly cloud that threatens all of life. May we in service to our God act out the living word and walk the road the saints have trod till all have seen and heard. And stewards of the earth, may we give thanks in one accord to God who calls us all to be disciples of the Lord. Children of God, I'm speaking these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please join me in the prayer to confession. Compassionate Lord, forgive us when we falter on this Lenten pathway, when the road ahead seems too uncertain and we are afraid. We admit that following Jesus is not an easy task. Jesus requires us to be willing to make the ultimate commitment of our whole lives, and we hesitate and hold back. Draw us back to you, Lord. Give us confidence and courage to face the future with hope. Give us strength to take up our cross and sacrifice what is necessary to follow your teachings. Give us a humble heart and renew our spirits. Let us pace, place our trust in you that the message of peace and mercy you have given to us through Jesus Christ may be offered to others through our own witness to your healing mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And please hear today's words of assurance. Even though the future is clouded, God is with us guiding, healing, comforting, restoring. Rejoice! In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and healed. Amen. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may it be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. Change my heart, O oh God. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. Change my heart, oh God, may it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. This morning's scripture is taken from the 8th chapter of Mark, verse 31 through the ninth chapter, first verse. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But more, turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, 
If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake or for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the, in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. Today I'm wearing one of my favorite crosses. It's a Celtic cross I've had for years. I think many of us have crosses as jewelry that we keep close. The cross has become the universal symbol of our faith. Anywhere you go in the world, an elongated T shape like this, with or without this circle in the middle, means one thing, believers and followers of Jesus Christ. But the cross, represents just one stop on Christ's journey. Doesn't our salvation rest in the resurrection? I used to wonder as a child why we don't make the empty tomb our symbol instead of the cross. But now I think our faith is about more than a single act of salvation, a single empty tomb. As Jesus explains in our passage today, there's much more to becoming and living as one of his followers. That requires taking up our own crosses and following Jesus all the way to his cross. This passage we're looking at today is a masterclass in discipleship. Up to this point, Jesus has been preaching about the kingdom of God, about forgiveness, healing, hope. So up to this point, being a follower of Jesus meant preaching the coming of the kingdom of God, a world in which the lame could walk and the blind could see, a world free of legalism and full of grace. This is a lovely and attractive message and compounded by bearing witness to all of Jesus's healing miracles, I think it would be difficult to resist following this Jesus. But in this passage, the discipleship rubber begins to meet the road. Jesus begins spelling out the true cost of discipleship. It involves more than spreading his message and drawing people into his circle. It involves suffering, even suffering unto death. It involves giving up one's life in order to save it. It involves a willingness to undergo suffering for a higher purpose for the cause of love. This is a much more difficult message to accept. And it seems to run contrary to what Jesus has been saying and doing so far. His healing miracles have restored life and wholeness. He's been relieving suffering. And here he says that he and anyone who chooses to follow him must not only accept, but embrace suffering. It doesn't seem to make sense, and it's much less appealing. So I think it's no surprise that even a member of Jesus's inner circle, Peter, has trouble hearing and accepting this message. Even Peter, one of Jesus's closest disciples, didn't like what Jesus was saying about the inevitability of suffering. He was so unhappy with Jesus's message, he took him aside to give him a stern talking to. Imagine reading Jesus, the riot act. But we do this sometimes. Sometimes we don't like what Jesus has to say. It's hard. It's uncomfortable. It asks us to do things we don't want to do. But following Jesus means following him to and through the cross. There is no other way. I'm not sure Peter was protesting so much because he genuinely disagreed with Jesus. I suspect that on some level, 
he understood that Jesus was right about the coming suffering, and Peter just couldn't take it. He couldn't accept such a dark and dismal reality. I suspect that Peter didn't want Jesus to have to die. And he didn't want to consider what that might mean for himself if he were to continue following Jesus. So Peter had a very human reaction of wanting to find an easier way, less painful way. But of course, there isn't one. And that's what Jesus corrects in Peter. He says, you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus knew where Peter was coming from, but he also knew the divine purpose and the suffering to come. Jesus then goes on to teach the disciples and the surrounding crowd about what it truly means to be a disciple and a follower of Christ. It means self-denial, the bearing of burdens, the acceptance of suffering, a certain disregard for one's own security and welfare. It means a willingness to lose one's life. This seems to be a pretty high price, but Jesus promises certain rewards. Whoever is willing to lose their life for Jesus' sake and for the sake of the gospel will find it. When we set ourselves aside for the sake of others, Jesus has our backs. It's like Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, the cross is laid on every Christian. As we embark upon discipleship, we surrender ourselves to Christ in union with his death. We give over our lives to death. Thus it begins. The cross is not the terrible end to an otherwise God-fearing and happy life, but it meets us at the beginning of our communion with Christ. When Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. Come and die. I think it's only natural that Peter had a knee-jerk reaction against this message. But when Jesus points out to Peter that he's looking at it from a human perspective, he invites Peter and us to trade in our human perspective for a divine one. In a divine perspective, there is value in the willingness to lay down one's life. In a divine perspective, there's strength and the ability to face suffering and experience pain, especially when done on behalf of another. This is the crux upon which our salvation rests. We'd have nothing if Jesus had thought of himself, had put his own well-being first and refused the cross. It's only through his acceptance of suffering and death on our behalf that we can enter into divine relationships. And if we are to be like Christ, as we are called to do, we must emulate this example of self-sacrifice. And adopting a divine perspective on what we and the world stand to gain through such acts of selfless love can empower us to truly follow Jesus all the way through the cross. Now, most of us will probably not be asked to literally sacrifice our lives luckily. But we do know that no life is immune from some kind of suffering. And the example we have in Jesus is a God who is not afraid of that inevitable suffering. A God who willingly chooses to enter into that suffering with us for the sake of relationship with us, for the sake of loving us. And this God expects us to do likewise. If we are truly to follow and be like Christ, we must not fear the suffering. Indeed, we must choose it for the larger goal of loving each other and sharing God's love in a lonely, hurting world. Now, this is not to say that there's anything particularly good or righteous about suffering in and of itself. Suffering for its own sake is never good, and no good comes from perpetuating suffering or causing another to suffer. Rather, Jesus' message is one that accepts the reality of suffering and finds a way to create good and perpetuate love in spite of the fact that suffering happens to us all. The true cost of discipleship, 
the truth of taking up our crosses and following Jesus can seem like a dismal message. But we know that the cross is not the end. As my mother would say, it may be Friday now, but Sunday's a coming. The cross is a step on the journey, not a stop. The path doesn't lead us to the cross and then end there. The path leads us through the cross to the empty tomb, to resurrection and restoration and hope. Remember the wisdom of the Psalms. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So do not be dismayed by the message of the cross. See it for what it is, a step on the journey to salvation. As our Lenten journey progresses and we draw nearer and nearer to the cross, may we not shy away from facing the reality of what it means to follow Christ. As we anticipate Easter, we symbolically follow Christ on this Lenten road to the cross and ultimately to the resurrection. May we remember that there is no Easter Sunday without Good Friday. There is no new life without death. And may we allow God's spirit to work within us, enabling us to see the suffering and injustice in our world that must be put to death and empowering us to follow Jesus all the way through death and into resurrection. Amen. our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you, we are an offering, Lord use our voices, Lord use our hands, Lord use our lives, they are yours, we are an offering, all that we up to you. We are an offering. We are an offering. We lift our voices. We lift our hands. We lift our lives up to you. We are an offering. Lord, use our voices. Lord, use our hands. Lord, use our lives. They are yours. We are an offering, all that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you, we give to you. We lift our voices, lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We are an offering, we are an offering. This morning we continue to pray for healing for Pastor Johanna, Maureen, and Jim Allardyce. We pray for our mission partners, Lisa Gonzalez, Anna Silvia Valencia, and other volunteers with Ministerio Cristiano Internacional para Sordos, or the International Christian Ministry for the Deaf in San Salvador, who continue their sign language interpreting for the Centro Cristiano Internacional, or CCI online, uh, during the COVID pandemic. We pray for God's protection as the pandemic continues its rapid spread throughout El Salvador. In, in addition, may God continue to use interpreters for the young deaf people to receive God's word. Lord, we 
We pray for peace in this world. We pray for peace and love among all people. Father, in, in a world that is sometimes so difficult to step up and be your followers, in a world where power and greed and competition and other things that go stray away so far from your word, Lord, uh, they dominate. We pray that you redirect our path and, we, and you give us courage to follow you and to leave our ego at the door and to, with full and open minds and open hearts, embrace you. Sometimes we take your gift of everlasting life for granted and we pray that we remember that we, we should give back um, for all of the wonderful love and life that you've granted for us. So help us to have that mindset, especially during Lent, but throughout the year. We pray that vaccines will be, continue to become available and that everyone will take them and, and that there will be health and, and, and we will all be healthy and um, get, we pray for hope that we'll get back to a state of normalcy and a uh, state of peace as we move forward into the future. We pray all of this in your most holy name. Amen. The prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we have and all that we are, that we may praise you, not with our lips only, but with our whole lives, turning the duties, the sorrows, and the joys of all of our days into a living sacrifice to you through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to pray so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to pray so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to work so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to work so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to sing so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to sing so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. We've got lots on our announcement docket this morning. Um, first up, our special Easter offering this year will be in honor of the many years of service of Bob Blinko, first as a missionary for Frontiers USA and more recently as its president. Our church has supported Bob for many years and he will be retiring in March. Bob has asked that our Easter giving go in support of a missionary couple, Lamar and Nicole Phelan. This young couple currently resides in New Hampshire and have just completed their training. The Phelans will soon embark on their first foreign mission with their family of four children. Our missions team has contacted them and believes that this is a wonderful cause for our support and is considering regular ongoing support for them following Bob's retirement. Please consider contributing to the Easter offering over and above your regular offering to the church. You can donate online using Zelle or by sending a check to the church. Please be sure to indicate on the explanation line, Easter offering. The deadline for contributing is the Sunday following Easter. 
and you're free to contact David Dowell if you have any questions about the Easter offering. Also, the missions team needs a few more volunteers to pray during these last few days of Lent. Please consider praying for two or more people who need prayer. For just a few minutes per day of love, you will be truly blessed with the knowledge that you have done great good in the name of Jesus. Again, you can contact David Dowell uh, for your prayer assignment. And finally, we are planning an in-person outdoor service in our courtyard for Easter Sunday on April 4. We will need to cap attendance for this service at 80 people. So please see the Friday email or contact me in the church office to sign up for your spot. We will also be having our traditional Easter plant dedications, thanks to the worship and music team. Please send your dedications to the church office by Wednesday, March 31 for inclusion in the bulletins on Easter Sunday morning. And also send a check or Zelle payment to the church for $15 per plant. The proceeds will go to support um, our on-campus nonprofit Humanity Way. And now may we go forth into the world to love and serve God and all of God's children, following Christ all the way to and through his cross to resurrection. And may God, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit be with you and bless you now and forevermore. Amen.